So the ongoing collapse of Mark Bussler and Classic Game Room is something I've been watching for the last year. It's fascinating because it really is kind of the epitome of a lot of things we've seen online in, in terms of these, these once successful internet business people who just crash and burn. And some of it is times of change. Some of it is external circumstances. But in a lot of cases, it's a result of their own issues, bad decisions they made, their own egos, their unwillingness to change and adapt to the times, that kind of thing. And I, I think Mark is a really good example of this. So I guess maybe before we like start talking about what actually happened and what's been happening since and why it's such a dumpster fire, let's just talk a bit about like what Classic Gamer is, Room is. So Mark Bussler is a former documentary filmmaker. He used to make stuff like about the Civil War and the Chicago World Fair, which he constantly talks about. So his his show first started back in 2000 sorry 1999 i think it was one of the first internet review shows and then that didn't really work out so we went back to documentary filmmaking and then in 2008 they launched classic game room hd for heavy duty as um he would put it and then they kind of went from a variety of different platforms it would go from youtube to vimeo i think there's like a couple others he went to um, there, there's just kind of constantly changing things. There was like side channels. Um, there was classic game room undertow, which uh, we'll look at a couple comments in a minute. But one of the comments, uh, I think, to a certain extent, suggests that one of the reasons he closed uh, classic game room undertow down was that people liked that more than they liked his what had become of his chin. So. I think just before we get into like the actual story of what happened, I think better than words can describe, let's just look at what his channel looks like today. So this is classic game room, uh, although it's called eighties comics and he, he changes the title of his channel like every month. So it was like classic game room and it was CRG Tome of Infinity and it was classic game room publishing. And then it was Lord Carnage, and then it was Turbo Volcano, and then it was like, he just changes it on an almost weekly basis, on, on an almost, yeah, like a, kind of on a monthly basis. So this is called 80s Comics, so I guess he's like abandoned the whole classic game room thing, and now he's just going to do uh, publishing. So let's see like what it says in the About section. Classic Game Room, founded in 1999, professional entertaining video game reviews that defy the status quo 80s comics classic game room entertaining video game reviews classic game room is rad to the max and that's another thing with mark is he is obsessed with like this 80s 90s style of humor like back where everything's extreme like radical tubular super mega death ray explosion except it's like completely unironic and it's just kind of become cringe over time uh he's also obsessed with him being a journalist so he calls all of his reviews this is a journalistic review of uh, this game was like a dis disclaimer he puts in front of all of them. Classic Game Room is rad to the max and posts daily reviews of games and hardware for all systems from all eras. Eras, Viewers, game companies, and PR firms looking to contact Classic Game Room should visit the website. Um, okay, so the, uh, that's, that's, I guess, what this channel is. It's, it's called 80s Comics, but according to the About section... Uh, they do daily video game reviews. So let's just scroll down and see when the last video game review was. Sorry if I'm a little all over the place, but there's just so much like nonsense to cover. We're going to be here for a little while. Uh, okay. Um, I'm seeing like spam of short comic book reviews, some of which are like 40 seconds in length. Uh, is there any video game like stuff anywhere in this? Um, oh, wait, no, that's, no, that's a, that's a trailer for a DVD. That's not a, um, an actual game review. Uh, that's also a trailer for a DVD. Um, 
holy shit, he did more. So <coughs> that uh, so we're back about four months, and I haven't seen anything yet other than just um, comic book reviews and him drawing random shit. So before we got to our current phase, it was actually worse because for like a full like six months, he just did like shitty t-shirts. So like, look at that sentient hot dog, 8-bit game over screen t-shirt died in space, dinosaur, lobster space, lobster t laser space, lobster t-shirt, retro jumping dolphin. T-Rex. These are like, these are amazing t-shirts. Laser Retro Shark. And like, no, this is literally it. This is literally like all he did for a full year. So the last review he has up here is Pokin Tournament. And we'll get to that in a second because there was actually more reviews he had up. But so many people were leaving negative comments on the later reviews that he deleted them and he turned off comments on some of them. But what kind of happened is every time he disabled comments or deleted a video, people would just post negative comments under the next one. Okay, so so what exactly happened? So what happened exactly? Well, about three years ago, Mark created a Patreon to keep Classic Game Room posting on a daily basis. Because you know what happened with everybody. There was the algorithm changes. I guess that was a bit before the adpocalypse, but like the early adpocalypse happened. Revenue has basically just been going down uh, for everybody pretty steadily over the last, I don't know, five or six years or so. And, and he was no exception. Now, was this because YouTube screwed him? and advertisers were pulling out of YouTube and the algorithm messed with him? Or was it because literally every single one of his videos he made the exact same jokes in? I'll leave you to decide, but it's probably a pretty big mix of them. He's forgetting, uh, when it opened, it was over $10,000 a month. And I mean, it stayed reasonably high. It stayed up to like, uh, before he did what all scummy, uh, YouTubers did and turned off how much money he was getting on Patreon. He was still making $7,000. And like, this is always the thing I don't get with these people. It's like, oh, I was just barely making ends meet. So I opened a Patreon. And now that I'm getting like an extra, like 80 grand a year, now I can't make ends meet despite my income doubling. Um, so anyways... All this stuff happened and Mark was kind of throwing a hissy fit. So he's just like, you know what? Screw you guys. You're not giving me enough money. You're only giving me like $7,000 a month and buying my crappy merchandise. So I'm going to take my show and I'm going to go to a place where they appreciate me. I'm going to go to Amazon. So Mark went to Amazon and we had got classic game room infinity or whatever it's called. Um, now, so he went to Amazon and, and I have to say, I don't, I, I don't feel like he really told his fans like this is like a shitty teaser trailer, but there's no video here. And this is my complaint that says it's titled moving to Amazon details included. Like that's all he needed to do. He could have just said, okay, guys, it's not working on YouTube anymore. I'm going to move to Amazon. Instead, he like said this stuff on like a podcast with Pat the NES Punk. But I, I don't see any video around this time period where he explains any of this. Like it, they just stopped suddenly. Like he just stopped making review videos and he just started posting this like drawing nonsense. Uh, and then he just posted all these shitty t-shirts for like a full year after that. So yeah, he went to, to Amazon and he made classic game room infinity or whatever it's called. And I was kind of excited once someone finally explained to me like what the hell was going on. I had to go back and look at the comments and like uh, the videos that he hadn't deleted. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, I have Amazon Prime. Maybe I'll go watch it. Well, classic game room infinity is only available in America. So as a Canadian, I can't watch it, even though I have Amazon Prime. So like, what was the point of that? So after that failed, um, he just said, OK, well, I'm not going to make game reviews anymore. I just going to need you guys to give me your money directly. 
uh, just just buy my t-shirts and I'm just gonna start pumping out uh, comic books. I'm gonna keep making comic books. I'm gonna keep making my um, the books, the shitty books, um, the the history ones. I like how he wrote a book, how to make a video game review show that doesn't suck. And then this wound up happening. Like just a bunch of stuff. I, I think he published like a ton of stuff back in 2017 to just try to milk the fan base for as much as possible. So like my kind of issue with this, um, this whole thing is he abandoned his fans to go to Amazon without, I think very adequately telling anybody anything or like explaining this, the situation. And he just expected them to all follow him. And when that didn't work out, he came back and his channel is now just basically begging people to buy his crappy comics and his crappy t-shirts um, and stuff like that. And, and the thing is, I don't know if people really like or care about this stuff like at all. Um, a lot of the people just seem to be supporting him because they they love what he used to make. Um, they enjoyed his older content and they keep feeling if he just goes by and keep they give him money long enough, he'll have to go back to making reviews. But he's he's not going to do it. Um, he said, I'm never going back. I'm just going to keep making comics under the classic game room logo and you're going to buy them because you're fans for my my comic thing. So it's just like a massive bait and switch. And he didn't close his Patreon down. Uh, I mean, he's lost most of his patrons, so it's not really relevant, but he didn't shut it down when he completely changed um, what the purpose of it was from uh, being about making game show video game reviews to making his crappy comics. So, yeah, and that's what's happened. So now he just pretty much every day put or multiple times a day puts out one of these like shitty 40, 50, like second two or three minute comic book reviews and like once again if he was a comic book review channel that would be fine my complaint is that this was a bait and switch that he's kind of using his former subs and former fans as a captive audience and trying to guilt them into buying his shit so yeah that's kind of where he is at the moment he's just like mass producing this stuff and trying to get it out there uh, although he hasn't put anything out since 2017, so I don't know if he's lazy or he has a bunch of stuff on standby. I guess he spent all that time making classic Game Room Infinity that didn't go anywhere. But um, let's see, does he have other channels? C Tropica Welcome. Okay, well, he has another channel he doesn't post on, so that's unsurprising. Uh, that being said, I want to read some comments from uh, Classic Game Room. Uh, Pokin Tournament, this is the last one he has up, and I think they say a lot of um, interesting things here. I see Mark deleted some of the critical comments as well as a few videos, so I'll just add some more. Your channel was never that good to begin with. I actually liked his channel. I, I enjoyed watching his videos from time to time. I guess you could say I was kind of a casual fan. I, I was sad when he left. <clears throat> you simply had the advantage of being one of YouTube's early game channels. It was mildly enjoyable in the beginning because you generally seemed interested in your work and liked games and it showed. Things went sour when YouTube changed its algorithm and your view count started dropping. But even then, you still had Derek and the Undertow crew, who, by the way, were better than you, but I digress. Uh, I've seen some people suggest that part of the reason that uh, they shut down uh, CRG Undertow is because people liked him more. <clears throat> then you decided to shut down Undertow and start an awful Patreon, which was nothing but a paywall to unlock your full YouTube videos. Yeah, he, his reviews would all be really short, and you'd have to pay, like, a certain amount of money a month to unlock the full videos, um, which were already dropping in quality and content. Oh, and by this time, we started seeing the horrible spammy in video ads for your crappy books, comics, and t-shirts. And you really should admit that you just hate your YouTube audience. At least the sane individuals who are smart enough to only... Uh, at least the sane individuals who are smart enough not to give you a penny for your garbage merchandise or Patreon. Next... 
you try your Amazon relaunch, which was horrible, decide not to make a season two, thank God, because you didn't make enough money. And finally, we get these 60 second throwaway videos uploaded on one of your alternate channels, not even the main one, which has been renamed multiple times. You sure know how to market yourself. When other YouTubers did videos people want to see, you reviewed Atari 2600 and Pac-Man games because by golly you can. Between quitting YouTube multiple times, the channel renaming, the merchandise spamming, shutting down Undertow, the cheap production and poor quality of your videos, your cringeworthy attempts at humor, Vectrax, Truxton, Edit Station, and your bitterness and contempt for anyone not willing to pay for your crap. It's a wonder you managed to last as long as you did here, which is amazing. So let me go up because there's some other comments here that there's like some people. This is your last review. Never more. No, there was one review after this one, but he deleted it because of all the criticisms. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Um, okay, I'm trying to find this. There was a really good one up here a bit. Why are you deleting your videos and why would you at least make a video to talk with your fans about the situation? You just left with no goodbye, nothing. So I'm not crazy. These people also felt that way. Mark doesn't tell things to YouTube. <laughs> he will only talk to people on Patreon and Twitter if he remembers seeing the name from the Patreon comment section. But it's not all bad news. At the rate he's bleeding Patreon subscribers, he won't have anyone left to talk to in about a year because he's a baby. Someone should make a documentary about classic game room. Well, um... I'm kind of doing that in my own shitty way. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, somebody criticizes Mark. He deletes the video too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, they keep doing it. Uh, they keep removing them. Let's see here. He's already given up on CRG Infinity. His one year of daily uploads, uploads ended after 60 episodes. Gosh, who could have seen that coming? Uh, let's see here. The last ever um, uh, CRG review on YouTube. He went out with a whimper rather than anticipated bag. Now we get our t-shirt videos. Um, well, what did he expect? You can't just vanish and expect people to not say anything. Uh, he does. He still makes CRG videos. They're on Vimeo. Are they on Vimeo? Um... Which just proves how clueless Mark is when it comes to managing his channel. He killed it by quitting and moving his content multiple times, making ridiculous paywalls, using his game channel to sell garbage merchandise, and just being an outright dick to his fans. He deserves what happened to his YouTube channel and failure at Amazon. Uh, yeah, so the shitty t-shirt ads were all Mark's doing. If you go to his website now, not that anyone would since it's just a giant wall of ads for his garbage tier merch. He has a whole section of his ugly t-shirts. <laughs> They're guaranteed to get you beaten up for wearing them in uh, public. Yeah. Um, so... That is, uh, that is kind of the Cliff Notes version of what happened to Classic Game Room. Um, it, was a, it was a shit show, and the shit show continues. And we'll see how long it goes on for before he has to go and get, like, a, another job. I'm just going to end this, and I've been trying to avoid mentioning him for the rest of this video, but I think he's worse than DSP at this point. Because DSP at least, like, explains things to his fans, even if he's dishonest as a way to get money out of them. He at least tries to, like, keep them up to date as to what's happening. And he does put out regular content on a daily basis, even if it is garbage. So those are my thoughts on the matter. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the little trip into one of the Internet's most recent shit shows. Um, God bless, and I'll talk to you guys.